So I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to play Famicom games on an American NES? You probably know where I'm going with this. So first of all, as you can see, a Famicom game and an NES game are... There's a few differences for what is essentially the same console. So how do you play this in this? Well, this doesn't work. I can tell you that for sure. All sorts of problems will happen. So obviously you can't just take these guys and put them in an NES and they'll work, unlike the Super Nintendo where you can just rip out the two plastic tabs and put in a Japanese game and it'll work just fine. No, you need an adapter. This is a honeybee adapter. It's one of many different adapters on the market which allows you to play Famicom games on your American NES. And the Famicom has a 60-pin cartridge or 60-pin PCB inside of it, whereas the NES has a 72-pin for some reason, I don't know. And that's where this guy comes in. This basically turns 60 pins into, and I don't know if that'll show up on camera, 72 pins. Ta-da! Now, the weird thing about this thing, and this tripped me up the first time I got it, is you would think that it would go front side to front side like this, and then go into your NES. It does not. It actually goes with the game backwards, like this and then it goes into your NES. And you want to get your little ribbon in the background here. And this goes in just like that. And it basically just goes in like a regular NES cartridge. And you have a little, little tongue hanging out of your NES, sticking its tongue out at you the whole time you're playing. And the reason this works is because Nintendo sort of did the exact same thing. In fact, I believe Nintendo actually created the hardware to do this. Uh, one of the reasons that the NES was able to have such a huge library upon its launch is because any specialty game that Nintendo could think of that they didn't want to port for a U.S. market, they literally just, inside of the NES cartridge, they put an adapter very similar to this one, and then they put the PCB from inside a Famicom cartridge also inside this. You can kind of see, like, if I put this all together, like it's supposed to be, kind of see that it's roughly the same size as an NES cartridge, and that's essentially what Nintendo did when they brought a lot of games to the U.S. market. So you very well might have a similar adapter to this in your collection without even knowing it. Now, I don't have any of these, unfortunately, otherwise I'd totally take one apart. However, I do know that the original printing of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out did have one of these uh, adapters inside of it. My copy of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was a second printing. It doesn't have it in there. I, I checked right before filming this video, but hey, whatever. Now, you might have also noticed that this guy's got a little ribbon on the back, and this is obviously just so you can take the game and the adapter out of the NES system, because, I mean, it's gonna be hard to remove it otherwise, because you just, well, it actually isn't really a good way to grab the Famicom cartridges. But in theory, if you grab the Famicom cartridge and pulled out, the adapter would stay behind, so that's why you have the ribbon. And it actually works quite well. All right, so let's take this little guy apart here. Uh, it's really simple. It just has two little Phillips head screwdriver or screws in the back there. And they just come right out of there. So if you look inside here, there's like two little spikes that hold on to the ribbon, and then to prevent it from falling off the, the spikes, they just put a piece of scotch tape. Uh, which is very well worn. <laughs> wow. This is all it is. It's just a PCB with a cartridge slot on top. Let me get a little closer here. And yeah, I mean, it's a nice shiny gold that has a couple resistors on it. <laughs> and that's really all it is. And these are basically what were inside of those NES cartridges that I was talking about where your Famicom game, the PCB would actually go right on top here. The only difference is obviously you don't have the plastic housing that like the Honeybee adapter and similar devices like it have. I mean, this is a cool old device. I got it at a convention uh, a few months ago. Uh, they usually go for about 100 to 150 bucks on eBay. I was lucky enough to find a guy who was selling it for 80, uh, which is kind of pricey seeing as I, at the moment I only have one Famicom game, but I do plan on getting more because there's a lot of good Famicom games that never came to the NES and I, I don't know, they're cool little devices and I'm really glad I own one of these.